while I'm sharing my screen. Unfortunately, I can't watch the chat, um, but I am relying on my uh, my wonderful team behind me. Oh, that's not the right button. Uh, to monitor the chat and let me know if anything comes up. Um, but let me go ahead and first of all, open my speaker now. And also say, um, hello, welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this presentation. Um, my name is Amanda Figueroa. I am the community director of the Curationist Project. Um, I'm really excited to use this, this time we have together, all 15 minutes of it, to talk to you about this platform that we've been working on for quite some time um, and about how it fits into this broader open knowledge ecosystem um, and about how we truly are at Curation is trying to reimagine what curatorial work looks like through open knowledge. Um, along the way, we'll also do um, some interactive stuff um, led by my colleague Neha, who will introduce herself to you in just a moment. Um, and we're also going to, um, to be able to show you guys a demo of what's to come for this platform um, in the very end. So I'm going to hop right to it. Again, thank you all so, so much for being here. Um, what a compliment to have your close attention. So our project is called Curationist. And uh, right at the heart of that word is, of course, the word curation. Um, all of us in sort of this Wikimedia community and all of us in open knowledge broadly understand that so much of our work is curatorial work, is this work of taking care of organizing um, and making visible all of the knowledge and all of these artifacts and all of these images that exist in the world. Um, but the, the word curation and the, the act of curation is a little sticky, is always the word that I like to use for it. It's sticky primarily because, especially in the Western world, um, all of our curatorial work is rooted in um, a singular Western tradition. And that tradition began initially with what we could call um, cabinets of curiosities, the, um, the collections and the um, truly the literal cabinets that were put in, um, in homes of wealthy people to sort of showcase their travels and showcase the, uh, the places they'd been and the wealth they'd accumulated. So when the British Museum was founded in 1753, um, it should be no surprise that it also took on that sort of cabinet of curiosities form, um, meaning that it really became a place for the might of the British Empire to be displayed. Just like those Regency wealthy families were displaying artifacts from their travels, so too the British Empire was displaying evidence of their travels, um, primarily in the form of looted cultural objects from Africa, Asia, and um, all around the world. As a result, although we as a field, the museum field, the open knowledge field, um, the cultural heritage fields have all moved away as much as possible from that colonial legacy, the fact is that so much of that stuff, so much of that legacy remains in the way that we classify and organize our artifacts. So much of that remains in the ways that we create taxonomies and made it metadata structures now that we're taking those collections online. Um, so that's that's why I say it's sticky. That's why I say that as much as I love this work, as much as my colleagues at Curationist love this work, there's more to do. There's a lot more to do. Um, which brings us to, here you can see exactly what I was talking about previously, which brings us to this, uh, this this fun little joke <laughs> that one of one of my colleagues always likes to say in our meetings is uh, that yeah it's curationist, but often it's curation ish. Um, and so what might what I mean by that is that in our pursuit of this really important curatorial work, we're also encountering amazing, beautiful, inspiring alternatives to that that legacy that that Western colonialist legacy. Um, that got us really excited and really inspired us as a team to start to invent this platform, which I'm going to get into depth into a little bit later. Um, we saw an incredible amount of knowledge being held in local level and grassroots organizations all around the world. People who really had such an intimate relationship with these objects 
and had the, the historical knowledge behind them to really offer something that we're not seeing in institutions, um, to offer a different take on the institutional taxonomic and metadata structures that we're seeing in museums, art institutions, cultural heritage institutions broadly. And so the project for Curation IST became to, to really understand, okay, how can we augment and support this, what I'm calling curation-ish work? And there are three things that we can and should do, um, both ourselves at Curationist and the open knowledge field in general. Um, those three things are, of course, to make images and artifacts widely available. I'm speaking to the Wikimedia community. I don't need to tell you guys that. You're, you're down. You get it. Um, and along with that, we also need to grant knowledge holders access to share their information. That means we have a lot of work to do in closing the digital divide. Um, as, as cutesy of a name as that is, the, the fact is, is that if open knowledge and especially digital open knowledge is going to be a force for good in the world, it really, really needs to enable internet access broadly. And the last thing, um, which in my mind is the, the sort of most important hurdle is, um, is we need to find a way to put local level knowledge on part with institutional expertise. We really need people in their local communities to be able to speak to these large institutions and to be heard by these large institutions and to be able to do so both on the level of conceptual knowledge sharing and also on the level of that metadata, also on the level of those taxonomic structures. Um, so towards that end, we at Curationist have been developing a platform that is, is working towards these things. And I'm really excited to take you through it more, a little bit more in depth. Um, but first I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Neha uh, to take you through a little activity to illustrate exactly what I mean um, towards that end. Um, Neha, go ahead and say hello and introduce Hi, yourself. Hi, how are you everyone? Um, I am one of the content editors here at Curationist where we also produce um, features and collections on the site for people to see how our tools are being used. Um, I am going to do a sort of visual associative brainstorming game with you to uh, make you aware of how there are gaps in metadata. I'm sharing my screen right now so we can do that game. And um, we go. Yeah, there are gaps in met metadata, but there are also resources out there. And um, and although um, at, we're going to use Wikimedia Commons as our um, search bar in order to do this uh, game, and all of you will have are welcome to participate in this game. The Jamboard is in the chat. That's where we're going to be working. So every it's for those of you who don't know, it's a whiteboard that. Uh, is run by Google and we all can contribute to it. It's super easy. All you have to do is if you're on another website and you want to copy an image and place it in this game, you, you're able to just do that Do that um, by copying the image and then pasting it in here. Um, and yeah, there's no login needed. Um, the next slide, please. So uh, what we're looking at is a cat mummy in cartonage. Um, that's the title of the object, as you would see it in the Brooklyn Museum's um, website. Um, that leaves you thinking, you know, and uh, of a variety of associations with it, not the least of which maybe if you don't know what the word cartonage means. Uh, next slide, please. This is, I'm just walking you through how we might work this uh, example. Um, so you might be reading this and it tells you it's a painted plaster coffin. So now you might be interested in plaster, you might be interested in painted coffins. Uh, there's a diamond shaped pattern. You might get interested in how the linen is arranged in that crisscross pattern, um, that it's a wild desert cat. You might be interested in that. Uh, none of this is necessarily in the metadata here. Um, and then the, it was shown in an exhibition called Soulful Creatures, Animal Mummies in Ancient Egypt. So that's kind of uh, exciting. There's actually more description on their website, but and more images as you can see on the bottom left, including their X-rayed images. Um, but we're gonna move forward to the next, um, next slide. 
So this sort of cat mummy can lead us as a group, for instance, or any group to research cat figures in jewelry or look up Egyptian mummy portraits, or we may think of jaguars, AKA wildcats and pre-Columbian or Mayan art. What I wanted to point out um, is I, I'm gonna go clockwise from the top left. So the first image is the linen from Tutankhamun's embalming cache. So I only put in the search term linen bandage in the Wikimedia Commons image search. And this was one of the images that showed up. Um, so that was pretty easy. That kind of puts us in the right neighborhood. The next one, I you know, know about all these mummy portraits. And I was like, oh, this cat mummy makes me think of mummy portraits uh, where, um, these paintings were made and placed on top of these um, mummies. Uh, so that was a useful search term. Next time, instead of doing cartonage, which doesn't really quite give you uh, important links, the definition of cartonage is painted coffin laid me to, led me to this painted coffin of Lady Nefer. Uh, so far, so good. But then when I started searching for cat jewelry or jewelry depicting cats or anything like that, it was well not impossible. I was just getting one thing and the rest were not useful search, um, uh, use, useful images that were coming up. So I went to the Wikipedia page for Egyptian cats directly and found this image. It's an Egyptian cat amulet and there are obviously ton, there must be tons of jewelry out in the world that has cats in it, but there was no way for me to get there. Um, this is off, off topic in some ways, right? Like a, a cat mummy in cartonage doesn't necessarily need to lead you to cat amulets, but cat mummies exist because Egyptians revered cats. Uh, of course they would have cat jewelry and they had tons of cat amulets, but there was no way for me to go from cat mummy to Egyptian cat amulet, the way the metadata currently exists. Um, the, next, the next one is the bottom left image. I did the search term um, Mayan jaguar because Mayan cat or pre-Columbian wild cat or pre-Columbian cat or any such um, combination did not lead me to what I knew existed out there, which are these jaguar sculptures and you know um, decorative items that, that they had in the pre-Columbian age. So this is just to set out how this type of thing can go. The next slide shows how we might actually work if we had just started with the cat mummy image. Next frame, please. So our game is to use Wikimedia Commons for the images. The yellow sticky note tells you that you can copy. I'm gonna, oh, right, I need to be in mine. Um, hold on, I'm gonna catch up to you guys. So the, the yellow sticky note tells you that you can either copy the image from your search in Wikimedia Commons or you can use this um, tool on the left side, which is to the left of my, um, my laser pointer. And you can use that to create a sticky note and just put your search term up on the Jamboard. Um, so we're gonna basically use another image to do something very similar. Like this cat mummy, I could have searched for a gesso covered mummy, cartonage, animal mummies, pet burials, painted coffin, which I did, wild desert cat, um, cat headdress, cat jewelry, cat worship, which I didn't search, but I could have, um, the mummy linen strips and the linen bandage. So that's kind of like the search term universe. And you can obviously put in either the term or the image. Next slide, P, please. But we're not going to use the cat mummy for the um, image. We're instead going to use this image, uh, this work, which exists in, um, I cannot see the bottom. I think it's in the Brooklyn Museum. Um, and I'm going to, could you shrink the, or put the text somewhere else? It's at the mat. Okay. Um, and 
It's a jade item from the early classic Mayan period. I just want us to observe, like if you had to like now go and make a few thoughts about this or follow up on this, what could you possibly be looking for? Um, you can notice that the creature is seated. It's cross-legged, so you could be searching for something cross-legged. Um, I'm not going to give up too much about this, but if you know about the piece, of course, you may uh, look for those uh, key search terms. The pose involves the hands like this. If you notice, there's a beak um, and the face. And then additionally, if you look at the two eyes, it seems like there's a series of receding eyes, but there's something even more novel about the eyes. Um, they seem cross-eyed, just like it's cross-legged. It's kind of a few key things to give you uh, something to go off of. Most people think of jade as Chinese and precious jade artifacts um, come from China, but or at least regular uh, Americans will. But um, there's also these classic Maya jades. So I kind of wanted to uh, put those two together. And our next slide, please. That is our jam board. Um, so I've shrunk the deity figure and uh, we can search in Wikimedia Commons. Maybe someone can put the link in the chat uh, for those who may not know how to get there for whatever crazy reason. And, um, and based on whatever you find or what your search term might be, I, I would love it if you guys were able to populate this for me. It could simply be a search term or an object. And I know, I know Amanda's gonna help me here. Amanda is, I was just typing in the chat, please feel free to jump in this Jamboard with us. Add your images or potential search terms based on this image to this Jamboard. You shouldn't need a login to be able to access it, but if you are having any trouble, go ahead and send me a direct message and I can help you uh, troubleshoot. You should also just be able to copy paste images without needing to save them. But again, if anything seems difficult or unintuitive to you, go ahead and let me know. I'm also going to come add my search term. Could add for See, I would also probably search for Thanks everyone for being so active in this jam board. I just get a thrill to see things start to pop up. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm actually trying to put the image, I'm, I'm trying to do some of these um, searches and find images and I'm putting them right next to them, like next to the search terms. But if, if you go to, uh, if you were to put that search term in uh, your thing, in your, browser, you can right click and just copy the image and then paste it directly. You don't have to actually download it or anything. We can probably take, oh, let's say five more minutes.
You can see I'm thinking of so many things as we play. I'm delighted to see so many things on this Jamboard that I either would never have thought of or actually I'm not sure what they are. We'll give it a few more minutes, guys, for any final thoughts. All right, about 60 more seconds for any final thoughts, any last search terms or images. Wow. All right, I'm going to do a last call and then Neha, I think you're ready to, to walk us through our results whenever you're ready. Yeah, um, give me two seconds. I'm putting this text down there. Okay, so great. Um, we've come up with a lot um, um, going from everything from ancient uh, Mayan jade artifacts and ancient deities to search terms that are about modern jade figures and animals, because clearly this one's not quite human, even if it's anthrop anthropomorphized. Um, so we, I, you know, what the, what happened to the jade mining image? Did it get covered? <laughs> hmm, oh well. <laughs> it's all good. So let's check that one out. And there was like a, so this is in the upright over here. You can see uh, a Taino, which is sort of like the Caribbean, Puerto Rican and Cuban, like in that area, like an inhaler. So not the right neighborhood um, of where we're looking at and not even quite the similar thing, but I, and I could not find anything like our object when I did cross-eyed deity. So that kind of gives us a clue of what's missing. Um, we have, um, I also did the search for, um, I think it was the, um, things have moved. Um, m m jade artifacts or something, and I came up. Oh, ancient jade. That was ancient jade, and I came up with this jade kong from China, the Neolithic period, and that was interesting. Uh, when I did uh, Maya jade artifacts, I got this Maya jade mask. Um, so there's a range of things we are able to find and a range of things that we might have more, more trouble with. Uh, what the curationist in some ways is trying to do is not only create 
the imagery, I mean, or create access to all this imagery and all these works that exist in the partner archives, but also create a second layer metadata level that may not exist in the original websites uh, to create a possibility for thinking through some of our questions. Um, and in some cases, it's as simple as uh, writing some colonialist strong in some way and or by writing the information or by adding information because none of the metadata has not been supplied because it's an object of low rank in some sense for the museum that's holding it, but may not be um, so from the point of view of the culture from which it was collected. Um, so we're, we're working all of those um, angles and that kind of gives you a, an idea of how this, this board might end up. Uh, the next slide, please. This is just to give you an idea of what, um, in the next slide, what uh, slide before it, sorry. Yeah, so this tells you what the website actually tells us on the mat. It's, a, it's an object that's well-researched and there's a lot of text on it. But it, you know, you might be searching. Well, after you read this text, you might say, "Oh, I'm going to look at cross-legged figures," or "I'm going to look up, look at something where there's an imagery of arms bent in towards the chest and curled in the crab claw position." Um, the deity is actually named. It's a principal bird deity, and so we don't know if it's actually the bird deity itself or a human wearing that mask as they do during rituals uh, that is depicted in this imagery. As I mentioned, the figure is cross-eyed. We did not, nobody caught on to the square pupils part, um, but they are square. So you could have gone searching for that. Um, these kinds of eyes are used to identify shining solar and or resplendent supernatural beings. It could have led us to searching for solar beings or you know various solar deities and creating a collection that has to do with solar deities uh, for somebody to come and look at on our website or somebody's research paper might be on solar deities. Um, how are we on time? We're doing great on time. Thanks for checking. Oh, great. Um, would we like to do a very quick second um, Jamboard? In this case, I'm not going to give you very much information at all. And I want to see what happens when we work with that image. Um, and so this is a bowl with Kufic calligraphy. This is all the information I'm, I'm providing. It's from the arts of the Islamic world. It's categorized as that in the Berkeley Museum. It's from the 10th century. And all we know is that it's from the Summonid period, uh, which doesn't tell us unless you read carefully in the text where it's from. Um, next slide, please. And that will be our Jamboard. Here we are. I'm going to make this image smaller, please, so that we can put other things on there. How's that? Yeah, that's great. Let's go for it. Let's try and come up with um, Again, everyone is free to hop in this jam board and let's see what we can turn out for this object, even though we have so much less metadata originally to work with. So again, similar to the previous, um, the previous artifact, please feel free to jump in and add post-it notes with search terms, add images that come to your mind. I see we're already thinking Islamic ceramics. And um, again, that information that we were given is down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Kufic was absolutely going to be my first search term. And we'll give it about, let's say, seven minutes, maybe even a little briefer.
Oh no, someone put us on the jam board. We too are search terms, each and every one of us. <laughs> I am going to move that with apologies to its to its creator. A couple more minutes for any final thoughts or images. Excellent. About 60 more seconds for any final images, search terms, thoughts of any kind, additional screenshots of the Zoom room. Yeah, this is great. So I can see vessels, calligraphic vessels, but people also want to know about calligraphic tools. Like how did this thing get drawn on this vessel? That's an interesting thing to think about. How was it thrown? Islamic ceramics, uh, the Kufic script itself. And then we see it being used in the Quran in a couple of examples here, uh, which might lead us to think, oh, it's got a uh, very flat and tall, um, uh, writing style, which is correct, it's a sort of squared off uh, script. Uh, Samanid uh, art it gives us a, a beautiful vessel, but what is Samanid? So just found the uh, area uh, that it's from uh, over there. So these are great. These are great wide rim platters. We could go with that. Uh, we could go with shallow bowls. Um, we could go just text on vessels. It doesn't have to be Islamic calligraph calligraphic. I really love the spiritual ceramics uh, sticky note that someone put up because uh, mm. that's something that you know is is absolutely something could could be searching for and it's not necessarily here in the metadata. Um, and Islamic cookware um, that could take us in another way, like dinnerware. Um, What's the purpose of this um, writing? Might take us to like proverbs on, um, on um, or reminders on our silver on our um, ceramic ware. So and slip trail painted text, amazing, great. That's so useful um, in terms of what we can and cannot find uh, from this. Uh, in terms of the actual image, it would be nice to go to the link and I'm gonna put it in our chat. 
so that um, here's and to everyone in the meeting. So if we can throw that up on our screen to, for us to read what it says, which just tells us what the, the inscription says, that it is brown, painted in brown slip on a white slip ground. So someone who was looking for slipware was doing, doing it was in the right place. Uh, we didn't get to Iran, but that's the summoned period. Once you saw the map, you would have gotten to that point and start looking up Iran. If somebody wanted to be nationalist in their search terms, they could go in that direction. Um, the script is actually placed there in Arabic, which is great. And it tells us the proverbs are attributed to Imam Ali um, and where they were published. Um, so there's a lot of information here. If we keep scrolling down, it tells us uh, not much else. The catalog descriptions has large bore bowl with flaring sides, ceramic, transparent colorless glaze, brown slip. So this is all technical, uh, the first half. Then it says huge Kufic characters form with center rosette, the interior design outside is plain, um, but it, the Kufic characters is it's where it's left. It doesn't say the proverb part. You'd actually need to get to the inscriptions part for it to tell you that it's a proverb. Um, so just those are sort of some clear, quick observations. So if, if this object hadn't been fully cataloged and the inscription hadn't actually been noted, then the description at the very bottom would be the only metadata in a way that we would have to work with. Um, any any thoughts that anyone else might have to add to this? Otherwise, I'm done here. I certainly have some yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Um, something I'm widely known for is my constantly having thoughts. So Thank you so much, Neha, for that, that wonderful activity, which really shows the way that not only are we as humans, you know, subject to our own biases and our own sort of trains of thoughts when it comes to describing images, cataloging images, um, putting images into organization and taxonomies and metadata. Um, we also, you know, have all of the legacy behind us of the history of these objects, um, both the history that we have captured and that we haven't, um, which is what brings us to first, certainly to our metadata storytelling. Um, we can share these slides after the presentation, which will include the associated visual brainstorm. And for those of you who are even interested in more metadata, um, a link to our, our medium publication on metadata learning and unlearning. Um, but it also takes us to the original question, which is what is curationist? What are we going to do about having so many different systems for metadata tagging, some of which are, um, are living with us, sort of um, the, the choices and non-choices of the people living now, as well as the legacies of these objects and the, the colonialism and the, the conquer that they went through. Um, Curationist is a platform that's doing our best to ameliorate some of those issues. Access databases from individual institutions, like we saw the Mets, like we saw the Brooklyn Museum, um, and making them all searchable um, in one place, one platform, but then trying to go a little bit further and making a place for, um, for those additional metadata and additional community cultural level knowledge to be held. Um, so I'd like to take you now briefly through what our platform looks like. Um, we are launching officially uh, in October this year. Um, and before then, there's a beta open and available to you on at curationist.org, where you can also sign up to be on our newsletter to hear more about the platform. begins with front and center that idea about reimagining culture. Um, it's at the heart of everything we do. And so towards that end, I'm going to bring us down quickly here since our time is limited to look at some of our editorial features. Um, this is the place where on our platform we're showcasing not only these open access images, but also the, um, the information that goes along with them. 
For example, if we come in here into uh, martial goddesses and mythical queens, we can see um, so much information, so many images um, that depict mythical queens, but also so much information that was contributed. Read it by and then if I scroll back quickly, I can also show you what the search looks like. So say I read this editorial feature and I think, gosh, I want to see more pictures of armor. Um, because who wouldn't? If I simply come up and type in armor, just like on our metadata jam board, you can see that we get a bunch of different things. This feels like a wildly disparate collection here. We get both images of armor, but we're also getting weapons. Um, so if we come and we add, let's say, women, suddenly we're getting a little bit closer. Our metadata is becoming clearer, both because of the metadata of our partner institutions that we're drawing from and because of the curationist sort of streamlining standardization process. We've got women. Let's also filter by material. Let's say we only want to see bronze goddess statues. So then we're getting even closer. Things are Things are shaping up. Finally, then I sit, say I find an image that I'm really intrigued by. I can come in, look at it here, view all the images, read information about the work, and see the original inscription that comes from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. From there, I'm able certainly, of course, to add it to a collection. Let's see, Armor Goddess, it seems like the right collection to add it. And then if you come to my profile, hello, this is me. I can also make this collection either public or private, again, allowing people to choose the level at which they contribute their knowledge. So in our last five minutes, here we are back at the Curationist homepage to come, again, when we launch very soon. Um, and I'll speak just a couple minutes more about where we're headed even after this. Um, like I said in the beginning, our metadata and our, our taxonomies are the ways that we find and access images, um, but they're also the way that we, we make those images and those artifacts known to other people. So a big next step for curationists, even after this original platform launches, is to think about ways that we're contributing our metadata and the grassroots level community cultural heritage knowledge that we're canvassing for in our editorial features, in our fellowship program, in our critics program, and be able to contribute it back to this large open access ecosystem. Um, we're exploring ways to contribute that metadata back to the Wikidata and the, the Wikimedia community, um, as well as back to the, the home institution for so many of these objects. Um, we really see that as part of our role as just a good citizen in the open access, open knowledge space. Uh, so there's so much more to come from Curationist. I really hope that you guys were able to get a sense not only of our work, but also how we do it and what is important about it to us. Um, and in our very last five minutes, first of all, let me thank Neha for her amazing, thoughtful work on that um, on that interactive activity. And let me thank Raven and Sadiq and Allison, my teammates for also being here. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, we would love to hear them. Um, I can stick around certainly until uh, our time slot ends um, to answer any questions or hear what you guys think. Or perhaps I'd like to hear from my teammates, what sort of metadata they were putting on our on our activity boards. I was the one that came up with the serap the spiritual ceramics. <laughs> well done. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, so please also remember to follow us on social media as we'll be giving you more updates as um, we get closer to the product launch in October. I have shared the uh, information about where to find us on social media and the chat. Excellent. Well, again, thanks.
everyone so much for being here. Um, what a joy to get to share so much, so many people's hard work with you. Uh, there's so much more to come from us. Um, like I said, please stay tuned. Um, and if you'd like to connect, I'm going to go ahead and put my direct email address in the chat. So if you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, or you just want to have another conversation, please don't hesitate to get in. So good night, everyone.